yeah so today we will talk about fundamentals of accelerating the deployments now what actually these deployments mean and how is that it is different from whatever we have done till now okay so let us try to understand this and we will show you some uh, videos of the demos which we have created and maybe tomorrow we will try to do some hands on on them and show you as to how basically it is to be implemented the idea is to make you comfortable today with the flow so that you people can actually sit understand it once and then tomorrow when we do something you would be able to actually correlate it with the total flow of what we have told you today right so with this intention uh, we have split this lecture into two separate modules right so fundamentals of accelerated deployment uh, we'll start with the basic idea of training inference and deployment okay so the idea here is that till now okay we have been doing this you have been actually doing a deep learning workflow which basically does the training right and after the training is the most important thing of inferencing right inferencing basically is your trained model needs to be put to the actual prediction use right at the site of where your application should actually run so when you have been doing this training till now what effectively you have done is there is a untrained neural network model which you have to you use that neural network model you use any deep learning framework for that matter then you have your training data set it can be cat dogs or it can be based on your problem which you are trying to solve right it can be a classification problem it can be object detection problem it can be any problem for that matter okay you have a training data set then you use all of this to develop a trained model with a new capability, right? Now, this particular model which you have developed now, which has been trained on this data set, is capable of doing the classification task for you, right? Now, what are you supposed to be doing is you have to actually use this particular developed model, okay, for inferencing or for using it to actually decide and do some prediction okay based on what you have the trained model for so this means that when you talk of inference and then deployment training is only half the story of what you have done till now you have been training it you have done distributed training you have done training with various uh, uh, parameters you have auto you have done tuning you have done everything so training is only half the story after we have after a model is trained we still need to actually use it to make prediction and on decisions right this is what is called as inferencing or inference now once you deploy this particular model okay for achieving inferencing that is when you call it as a deployed ml inference system now generally where do you actually deploy them you deploy them either on the cloud or on the edge device right and i hope you people are very very clear about what does it mean so when you deploy it on the cloud your inferencing portion or execution of the inference engine is actually run on the cloud or it can be done on the edge device right so we would be showing you a video of doing it on an edge device right and once you are able to deploy it actually how do you measure the performance of this deployed ml inference system what do i mean by this right so let us try to understand actually you would have trained a model it's giving you some accuracy of let us say 95 percent but when you deploy it 
at a place which is supposed to do the prediction for you okay on some device it can be a cloud or it can be edge how is that the performance of your trained model okay is happening on that particular inferencing system right how does my model which is trained behave on that particular inference more inference system okay so so this basically means that once we have trained this model it has to be put okay on the device or the edge device or wherever it is supposed to be run and where it will be giving you okay the decisions so here you are applying this capability to new data so this trained model is there you have put it on a edge device or you have put it on a cloud this becomes your inferencing system and once this becomes your inferencing system okay there has to be an app or a service which you are developing which will use this trained model which needs to be optimized please understand it needs to be optimized for running efficiently on this edge device okay now why why do you want to optimize it the reason is this trained model was trained with parameters on a let us say a high end gpu or a data center gpu you can do the inferencing there also but will, will it be of any use to us no we want the inferencing to be done okay at the actual site or actual place right now that actual place or a site would be either a cloud or a edge device now this edge device which you talk about are not as computationally strong okay or as computationally strong as these data center devices are okay these devices have very less amount of memory right less amount of compute power and they have to use very less amount of power as well so how do you actually now convert this trained model which was actually trained using this type of a huge system which obviously will also be very big in size or huge in size but it has to be efficiently running on this small system okay and give you the correct prediction so this is where this talk is going to concentrate on okay so i hope you have understood the context of what actually is going to be discussed today so you have trained you do have to do inferencing this inferencing has to be done on a device it can be either on a cloud it can be either on an edge device which has got certain constraints of memory power size everything but you should get the same performance okay of what you have already actually attained okay when you were doing your validation testing and some testing on your actual model when you are doing it on the data center gpu or on the dgx right so this is the whole context now what are the basic things which we need to keep in mind okay when we try to work with understanding the performance of the deployed system and when you say performance of the deployed system it means that you should be talking of all of these things which have been written on this slide what what we will start with is accuracy now when we say accuracy you have developed a model now you are supposed to be actually optimizing it further in size okay in the way in which uh, it stores the information there so many things which you need to actually do which we will see and still it should be as accurate okay as you would have done it during your 
training, validation, and testing phase. So the accuracy thing is as to how accurate is the model on the queries which are coming in. Then how long do we need to wait between when we make a query and when we get a prediction from the system? So latency is very, very important. You are deploying that system okay, in real time. So the latency is of utmost importance. Of course, accuracy is also of utmost importance, but latency will tell us as to how much time we will have to wait before the next query is answered, right? And the third point is the throughput. In a sense that if we have a large batch of queries, which we want to predict, how much predictions can we get per second out of the system? So try to understand the context in which we are trying to actually equate the throughput of the trained model as well as the throughput of this particular device on which you are porting this model, okay, which is an optimized model though, okay? Now, how much energy per power is consumed to make one prediction. This basically means that how much power is used by the deployed system in general. Now, broadly, these performance measures which we have discussed will depend on the model size. Now, you have X amount of model size, which you have seen it in previous uh, classes. Now, how many bytes are needed to store and to transmit the learned model? You have a learned model now, right? Now, this model has to be shifted to a smaller size device. Now, what should be the size of that model now? Okay, how do you do it? And how much memory is used on this deployed ML system? Because it will not have too much memory, right? As compared to your DGX or as compared to your system, which has a GPU connected to it or whatever, right? And once everything is done, you basically have to understand the cost as to how much money does my deployment cost? How many uh, edge devices you are going to deploy and how fast you are going to get the predictions done, right? and how much cost is going to be incurred for actually deploying okay these devices so the basic idea here is that when deploying this type of a system is to be done there are trade offs among all of these matrices so all of this you will have to keep in mind when you basically try to deploy a system okay so i hope this is clear as to why are we concentrating too much on this aspect of just trying to do inferencing on a system which needs to be actually deployed or that particular model needs to be deployed on a smaller system or something like that okay so now Let us try to go into what a model deployment means. We have thought of what are the parameters which we will need to keep in mind when we are trying to actually um, deploy a model. So now let us try to understand this model deployment. So this is your model which needs to be deployed. You can deploy it anywhere, right? You can deploy it on a GPU, you can deploy it on a cloud, you can deploy it on some small uh, devices with GPU, right? So model deployment basically talks of integration of the model into an existing production environment, which can take in an input and return an output that can be used in making practical business decisions. So this is what you mean by a model deployment in technical terms. 
so the idea is to integrate the model which you already have into an existing production environment which is going to take an input and return an output for making practical business decisions okay at the real point of decision making now why it is very very important is that effective deployment is needed to provide proper prediction to other software systems so you would be using this okay as input to other decision making softwares maybe so that is where the effectiveness of this deployment is of much importance and we also need to maximize the value of the deep learning model by reliably extracting the predictions this means we should get maximum value out of the deep learning models which we have developed and we should also be able to extract good reliable predictions out of them so this is the whole gist of trying to have model deployment on various different types of devices now very very important thing in this lecture is to understand how do we make a model smaller in the sense you would have trained a model it would have got a lot of layers you would have got a lot of weights you would have done forward propagation backward propagation all of this is condensed okay into some information which depicts a specific model okay now what we are talking of is trying to actually reduce the model size but we want to reduce the model size but we want to keep the prediction rate the same this ultimately means that we are trying to do some model compression okay so you are trying to compress the deep neural network model now what will we achieve by doing this okay now the goal is to find a smaller easier to compute network with the same or similar accuracy please understand this that whatever deep neural network model we have trained we have to now arrive at a smaller easier to compute network because you are trying to actually do it at the edge which is not as compute intensive as your existing data center gpu was so you are supposed to find a smaller model which should be easier to compute and the condition is that you should actually have the same or the similar accuracy for doing that task for which your actual model was trained so there are five different approaches of doing it of arriving at a smaller model from actually a trained bigger model which you have already got the first one and we'll concentrate more on this in today's as well as the next class so when you talk of low precision inferencing or we would like to use low precision arithmetic for the inferencing part we'll discuss what does it mean but the idea is to use int 8 instead of fp32 in a general sense of training so we would generally be using fp32 for actually trying to train our model for obtaining better accuracy better precision and all of that 
once that is all done how do we actually convert it into a low precision arithmetic for achieving the same type of prediction okay during inferencing is what tells us of how do we actually do low precision inferencing the other idea is pruning which basically means you remove the weights that are close to zero and or you remove the activations that are usually zero so when you do this this effectively creates a smaller model now in some of the cases generally you would have seen that when you are fine tuning your training model itself people go in for pruning so the effective idea is there also if you reduce your model during training phase that's a good idea right there also of course you have memory that does not mean you should waste your memory right so you anyways are trying to optimize your model at that point itself so people do pruning at the training phase itself to improve upon your model now the third thing is there is something which people have been talking of we know from decades that we have this compression method right and people also have been using lossless compression techniques as huffman coding to actually code your learned weights of the network so that it reduces the model memory size of course you need to have the decompression also happening at the other end so the idea here is to reduce the memory footprint of your model one of the other ideas is knowledge distillation which basically means that you take a large or a complex model which is called as a teacher and using that you train a small or a simpler network which is called as a student to match its output so this basically is related to something like using ensembles or distilling the ensembles models right also the fifth point is efficient architectures when you say efficient architectures this is not actually going to make a model smaller in a sense that directly it's not related that you are going to make a trained model smaller but there are certain architectures which are designed to be very very effective at the inference time so these particular models were developed to work on situations which are to be run on edge devices or on mobiles or on any other uh, systems wherein the inferencing is to be done and these architectures okay are very very efficient at inference time so you can use these architectures train them and then use them effectively directly for the edge devices or the inferencing devices right so this is how you actually try to make a model smaller any questions till now or any doubts till now <laughs> 